What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Pokemon Masters yet again. So today we're going to talk about another important aspect of the game, and that's going to be team building, and how you're going to go about making teams. I've gotten a ton of questions since Red dropped the other day about how do I, how do I build a team. So, we're going to go through single player and multiplayer teams, good Pokemon for each individual slot, etc, uh, etc. Et so, first, let's go ahead and do a single player team. So this is going to be, you're just playing against the computer on your own, no teammates involved, right? So the very first thing you want is your damage dealer. Obviously you need to do some damage. Now, there's tons of these. Uh, the best ones, you're going to have guys like Brendan, Olivia, Red, Cynthia, Lance. You can use Blue or Karen. Honestly, damage dealers, and even in single player like parties in general, are pretty freeform. That's part of what I like about this game, is that, especially in single player, you can basically do whatever you want and be pretty successful. Like, Solgaleo, sure, whatever. So for this example, I'm going to use Red, because everybody... Obviously, is is the big time on red. So I'm gonna use red as my example damage dealer for a team building. So now you've got red. How do you support him? So your your two slots are always gonna be support. Now red is pretty self sufficient. So is like Olivia or Brendan. So this still can kind of apply to him. So first you think I've got my attacker. Can my attacker maximize his own attack? So in the case of red, yes he can. Okay. But some attackers that can't do that are like, Cynthia can't get plus six on her own, I don't think. What does this match is too fun do? Nope, speed and crit. So Cynthia, for example, can only get to plus four attack on her own. Lance can't raise his attack at all. So we'll use Lance for this one because Lance can't raise his own stats, okay? So red is a little bit too self-sufficient for me to say what you should use for a team for him because you can just do whatever you want. So Lance can't raise his own attack stat, right? And his main attack is Hyper Beam, which takes four gauge. So right off the top, like right off the top, you know he needs damage support and he needs gauge support. So who raises special attack and who raises gauge? Well, Rosa does both. So automatically you've got special attack going into Lance and you've got free gauge recovery. And then you need more special attack, right? Because you still can't maximize him. Done, nice and easy, right? Single player teams, super easy to build. So right here now with Lance, you've got plus four regular attack, plus six special attack, so you're buffing both uh, his sync move outrage, you're buffing Dragon Claw, and you're buffing Hyper Beam. You've got Rosa there to recover his move gauge in plenty of time to uh, be able to do whatever you want. You can also remove this Rosa and run the other Rosa for a longer term uh, move gauge recovery, but you're not getting maximized Hyper Beam damage anymore. You can really do whatever you want. It's pretty free form as to how you want to do it. You could, let's say you don't have, or well, well everyone has Torchex. So let's say you don't have Holiday Rosa and you don't want to run regular Rosa for, actually, she's free. You've got her, everyone has Rosa. <laughs> free characters are so good in this game. Congratulations, you have two free characters that now Dragonite can easily sweep basically anything in single player. Cynthia, let's say. Cynthia is your attacker. Well, she can't maximize her own attack stat but she can raise her crit rate and her speed, and she can get pretty close on attack, right? So, who raises attack and who raises crit rate? Well, Phoebe can do both. So Phoebe can now allow her to maximize both her crit rate and her attack stat pretty easily. And then after that, you have two real kinds of support. You have defensive support, you have healing, or you just have an extra attacker. So Cynthia and Phoebe alone, right, you've got all of your offensive stuff taken care of. So you can run someone like Leaf, who gives you move gauge support just like Phoebe does, but she also gives you a heal. Or you can run Rosa, who gives move gauge support. Or you can run um, Holiday Rosa, who gives you attack and move gauge support. It's pretty easy. I'm not going to dwell on single player too much more because I feel like the, the point is understood. Attacker, two supporters that maximize that attacker. That's all you need simple easy all right so we're gonna disband now let's talk about co-op teams so co-op teams usually have a pretty simple function right you have your first slot and then they go in order by the way so they go slot one then they go left and then they go right so center is your first character left is your second right is your third so for the center character 
You want someone who's able to be self-sufficient and do some damage on their own quickly, right? So the best candidates for this are Brendan, Olivia, or Red. So these are guys that are going to go out and they're going to do work on their own. They don't need anyone's help, and they're just going to do as much damage to the field in front of them as they can before they go down. So a lot of times you can get to a sync move with these guys, depending on the boss that you're fighting against. Sometimes you can't. It's not really a big deal if you can't because the sync move is not necessarily their job. Now it can be, like if you're gonna sync move and it's probably gonna put them so low that you could win the game without needing it later, fine. Especially with Red, because Red's gonna go Mega X, he's gonna do even more damage. But Brendan doesn't necessarily need it, Olivia doesn't necessarily need it, it doesn't really matter. The point is, they're quick attackers that are able to maximize themselves really fast and just start pumping out damage, right? They don't need, like Lance for example, even though he has Hyper Beam that does a lot of damage, he can't maximize his own damage output, so he's really not great for this spot. So for now, we'll say Red, because again, everybody loves Red. So we're gonna put Red on there. So now you have the last two slots on your team, you have left and right. So left is your number two. So what you want for your number two slot is someone who can pass buffs to somebody who's gonna want them in the back. So your main people for this are gonna be Leaf, and they're gonna be Phoebe. I air a little bit closer to Phoebe, just because of the fact that Leaf, um, she can only pass attack. Phoebe can pass attack and crit. Now, there's there's advantages to both. So, example, Phoebe is the one we're going to take. Phoebe can pass two different stats. But the downside to Phoebe compared to Leaf is, one, Phoebe has to KO herself to pass. So, once Phoebe wants to pass her buffs, that's it. She's done. You can get no value out of her after she passes her buffs. Leaf, on the other hand passes her buffs by switching out. So you manually switch Leaf to the third slot person, and the buff passes itself, so you, you can give him the attack buff, and Leaf can come back out later and support the team if the person that she passes to isn't able to get the job done, right? So Leaf has a little bit more staying power, she has a little bit more team value, but Phoebe makes the back row person just that much stronger. So now the question is, who do you run in the back? Well, the back slot is always used by somebody who's going to receive those buffs and then be able to mega evolve and just start doing big damage. Mega evolution in the last slot is generally the way to go. Um, you could run somebody like an Olivia or a Brendan in the back, but you really don't need to because, like, the sync gauge carries over from all your Pokemon, right? So the front guy is doing all that work and he's taking all that time off the sync gauge. Then the middle guy comes out and spams their buffs, and then they get themselves into the position to pass those buffs. You're probably ready with a sync move for the person in the back slot. So that's why Mega Evolving is really easy for the person in the back. So obviously the candidate that everyone's aware of is Steven Stone. Steven is your, your default guy in the back if you have him because Mega Metagross is so good. He's able to endure, uh, endure fatal hits one time. He's got that bullet punch, which is a quick ability, so you don't have to worry about the... Uh, move gauge after a certain point if you're not using red in the front and instead you have him built more to be a, uh, a a finisher i guess you can run red back here i don't think this is where red maximizes his value but it's totally up to you you can also run someone like karen or cynthia who both have really great mega forms blue like mega pidgeot still really strong uh but generally if you're gonna do the buff passing strategy you want someone in the back who is going to benefit from all the buffs they're getting. So special attackers like Blue and Karen, they're not getting that attack value out of Leaf or Phoebe. So you could run feasibly like Torkoal. I think Torkoal gets passed on at two dupes, or at one dupe, sorry. But like Torkoal has no way to KO itself, so Torkoal is going to be really slow. So generally, I shy away from special attackers in the back. I go for Steven or you can go for Cynthia, both of which are super powerful Pokemon in the back with uh, Mega Evolution. They're good, right? There's no two ways about it. These guys are good. So a Mega Evolved Garchomp has 409 attack, 335 speed, and it gets access to Slash, which has a high critical hit rate. So combine that with uh, this match is too fun, which raises his crit rate. You can get his crit up by two, and you can also get crit from Phoebe, you can basically spam either crit slashes or crit earthquakes pretty much constantly. If you run Leaf, 
Slash may be a little bit more useful to you because you're not going to be able to maximize crit value. If you run Phoebe, you're getting maximum crit anyway, so you can just spam crit earthquakes. Steven is kind of the same way. So Mega Metagross has 460 attack, but his speed is a little on the slower side, so he's not building his move gauge back up as quickly. So it's not a huge deal, but Leaf does give a little bit more movement gauge than Phoebe does, just in case you have to pass it, because Phoebe has to use her movement gauge to KO herself. So Phoebe is not going to leave Steven with as many moves. But that's okay, because Bullet Punch is a 3 for 3 quick move that doesn't even need movement gauge. So Steven is sort of the ideal guy to have in the back. You've got best there is, and if, Megagross has, if Metagross has Mega Evolved, the user is able to endure the next hit. So you can use the best there is just to make sure that you are able to endure one fatal hit, and then you can fire off Iron Head or Bullet Punch based on whatever you've got, especially because uh, an advantage of Phoebe over Leaf as well is that Phoebe is able to pass more than plus four attack. So with Leaf, you can pass... Uh, plus 4 attack into Metagross using X attack and then Mega right away with plus 6 attack and you can use a maximized Haymaker solid still Meteor Mesh. But if you have Phoebe and Phoebe uses her um, unbreakable bonds when her health is low, so the lower the HP is, the more it increases the move gauges and raises the attack of all allied sync pairs. So you get more attack the weaker she is. So it's riskier to hold on to this. But if she's at full health, Unbreakable Bonds isn't giving all that much. Whereas if you launch a double edge or you take a couple hits, like first, like let's say you start with Dire Hit all, and then you're taking hits while you're using Dire Hit, and then you flip into Unbreakable Bonds, you're going to get more attack that way. So Phoebe is, is less consistent, but higher burst than Leaf, which I think is more useful for Steven especially. Um, I know not everybody has Steven, but like I said, you've got Steven, you've got Cynthia, if you want to use a non-limited pair in the back, you've got, like, obviously the ones up at the top that we talked about earlier. Mega Lucario, even. Mega Lucario is going to be a little fragile, but it's going to be a good damage dealer when it's buffed all the way out. You've got the built-up uh, Infernape, if you max out his uh, Sync Grid. Can be okay. I, I would stick to a Mega Evolution, but, you know, whatever. You could even pass to somebody like Solgaleo. I think Solgaleo is better in the front than the back. But there's a lot of options that you can use in the back. Personally, this is what I run. Red kind of does all the work himself, because I know a lot of people pull Red, but if for whatever reason Red isn't able to do all the work, Phoebe can easily get it over to Steven. Or if you prefer a little bit faster, with a little bit more team value, you can run it like this. Uh, Phoebe creates a more powerful Steven, but Leaf is more valuable to the team. It's really up to you in how you want to run it. Um, yeah, that, that's team building. Co-op team building is, is seems difficult, but it's actually pretty straightforward. You know, you've got your heavy hitter in the front, you've got a supporter in the middle, and you've got a mega attacker in the back. Or if you can't get a good buff passing supporter, you can run a third attacker or just an extra supporter. So, like, let's say you've got all offensive guys, right? Like, oops, I, I don't have a good supporter. You can literally just do something like this. Ta-da, right? It's not super difficult. Um, this team is not going to have a super strong end game. It's going to be kind of slow, right? Because these guys all have to take time to buff themselves. And if you're buffing yourself constantly, um, you're just not outputting speedy damage like other characters are, or other team builds are. You can also do something like... this so you've got a mega in the back a high damage guy in the front and then just an attacker in the middle who's just there to do some damage right so co-op has gotten a lot easier so you don't need to stick to the stringent attacker buff passer mega thing that you really needed in the past because like you could go through your whole team and get torn apart that's not generally the case anymore um the steven event was like a little difficult if you were autoing but like a well-made co-op team nowadays does not need to be rigid in formula. So you can run something like this. I, I like the old formula, just because I like having explosive finishers in the back. So this is what I generally go with. I, I'm making the switch over to Phoebe, just so Steven can be even more explosive. But generally, this is the team I like to use. Um, and that's really it. 
I, I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you guys. I think it's it's pretty simple. I know it's a little weird at first because the buffs are so like weird and not everybody can pass. Buff passing is getting a little bit more common. I think there's a couple more that I didn't mention. Um, like Torkoal, for example, gets pass it on, but it's hard for Torkoal to use pass it on. But Torkoal's the only special attack passer, so you can get Torkoal and then combine it with something like a Karen or a uh, a blue and build it out that way. You have to build Torkoal Syncrid to do that, but you can do it. Um, basically, a team building guide. The one reason I waited so long to do this, because I wasn't doing it right away. I'm going to ramble for a minute now that the informational section is done. The reason I waited so long to do this is one of my favorite aspects of Pokemon Masters is the fact that it's become more and more freeform. And yes, there are ideal ways to build a team, like we just talked about right here. But your team doesn't have to be built that way. And you can generally thrive by supporting your allies. Like some people just build, bring all support Pokemon. I've seen it in the past where like you'll connect to somebody who just brings all support and they just buff the living hell out of your guys and make sure that you as the attacker can get the job done. That's totally fine and totally viable. I think it's risky to, to uh, pug with that. You're probably better off going with your friends who know what you're doing, but it's still viable to do it, right? Or you can build out something like Claire or Iris or, you know, Rosa or whatever. It doesn't matter. There, there's so many things that you can do. It would be impossible for me to cover all the options in one video. So I just gave you what I think is the optimal way to do it is this setup right here. Attacker, buffer, receiver. Oh, that's my little gear menu. I, I didn't put gear on. Gear is a whole other video. I'm not even going to talk about it right now. Don't worry about it. It's not that big. It's just a little bit of stat buffs. Not that big of a deal. But uh, yeah, that's the team building guide. Obviously, share what teams you like to use in the comments down below. Uh, I would love to hear it. If you disagree with the information in this guide, I, again, I want to stress that team building is very freeform. And you can kind of do whatever you want to do as long as you're finding success with it. This is not for me to say that the teams that you're building are wrong or anything like that. I'm just trying to kind of give an idea of how you can approach building a team so that it flows through a co-op battle, right? So obviously uh, I have a, a video a while ago on the differences between single player and co-op battle. So I'm gonna link that one in the description and maybe I'll put it up, you know, a little thingy on the video screen as well at the end of the, at the, end of the video. Uh, so check that one out too, just to get an idea of how co-op battle differs from single player and how you as a player kind of have to treat it a little bit differently. Uh, and that's it. So thank you guys. Obviously, like, comment, favorite, subscribe, yada, 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 do all that stuff. Uh, and I will see you next time for more Pokemon Masters coverage. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.